Hey guys and welcome to Skyworld. In this video we're going to be talking about Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a country in the south. Caucasus region that is bounded by the Caspian Sea to the east Russia to the north Georgia to the northwest Armenia. Turkey to the west and Iran to the south Azerbaijan also has a landlocked exclave. Known as the Nechovan Autonomous Republic, the population of the country's 10,164,000 people Azerbaijan is not very well known throughout the world so let's change that what's so special about Azerbaijan well. First it has a wide variety of landscapes and 9 out of 11 existing climate zones from deserts to the snow-capped mountains. Also it has delicious food and friendly people through different time periods. This area was part of Caucasian Albania Iranian dynasties Russian Empire and the USSR. The Republic of Azerbaijan proclaimed its independence from the Soviet Union on August 30th, 1991 since then it has come a long way but it had an obvious advantage over the other USSR republics two-thirds of the country is rich in oil and natural gas first industrial oil production in Azerbaijan started in 1847. That is 11 years prior to oil discovery in Pennsylvania, USA. By the turn of the 20th century, Azerbaijan was producing nearly half of the world's oil today. The country's nominal GDP is over $73 billion. It's a huge step forward since 2004 when it was less than $8 billion. The national currency is the manit. Let's take a look at the major cities of the country. Baku. Baku is the capital and the largest city of Azerbaijan with a population of 2,293,000 people. It is situated on the western coast of Caspian Sea on the southern shore of the Abshorn Peninsula. Baku is sitting 28 meters below sea level which makes it the lowest lion national capital in the world. How's that? possible because the Caspian Sea is also below sea level. The main attraction of the city is Ishari Shahir or the inner city. Within the inner city lies the Palace of Sherman Shaks, a royal retreat dating back to the 15th century and the centuries old stone maiden tower which dominates the city skyline. It's a city within a city in 2007. It had a population of about 3,000 people. Carpet merchants, men playing bay gammon and a labyrinth of narrow well-groomed streets with foreign embassies, restaurants and souvenir shops. When oil boom happened at the end of the 19th century it attracted all kinds of people from Russia's to rich Europeans who not only got rich on Azerbaijani's black gold but they introduced European style and architecture thus the city earned the reputation of the Paris of the East the state oil company of Azerbaijan Republic known as Sokar is a fully state-owned national oil and gas company headquartered in Baku funny fact is that gas price and country is fixed very convenient no matter which gas station you go to is going to be the same and price for regular gas in 2022 is 2.2 dollars per gallon Baku has many universities the largest of which are Baku State University and Azerbaijan State Economic University tourism is growing and I met a lot of foreign tourists from different countries let's talk to them I'm all right how do you like it in Baku so far it's so nice where do you come from Come from the United States ST Lewis, Missouri, good stuff. And what are you doing in? Bakua, I well, we just got married. This is my wife. Fidena, we met in the United States and she's from here, so we've been hanging out with her family, just getting to know each other. The official language is Azerbaijani, which is a Turkic language. But I was surprised that Russian is also widely spoken and the younger generation speaks English. Would you say the usage of Russian language is kind of decreasing? Most of people of older generation they used to live in Soviet Russia, that's why they are good in Russia and the only people from youth who knows Russian is like we're children of people who lived in that era where Russian was the main language but now it's decreasing and English is more common because overall in the whole world uh, everyone speaking in English it's like main language right Baku began reinventing itself as an ultra modern metropolis starting from the early 2000s and now the city has a lot of impressive architecture like the Haider Aliyah Cultural Center it's a museum of modern art designed by Pritzker Prize winning architect Zakhar Hadid inside you'll find Find many different exhibitions about Azerbaijan and its history as well as an automobile exhibition the zebra jean carpet museum in the shape of a folded carpet displaces urban giant carpets and rugs of various weaving techniques from different periods the Crescent Hotel Dennis Mall which reminds me of Sydney Opera and of course the flame towers some of the most iconic structures of Baku they represent flames of fire because this region is known as the land of fire one of the towers is used as condos the second one is bureaus and offices 
offices and the third one is the Fairmount Hotel Baku has a wide range of mesmerizing architecture from different time periods look at the Palace of Happiness 12th century Romano Tower the City Hall building Mizami Museum of Azerbaijan Literature Azerbaijan State Philharmonic Hall and many beautiful mosques like Hader Mosque Tazapir Mosque and the Bibi Haybat Mosque which is a recreation of the 13th century mosque that was destroyed by the Bolsheviks Baku Waterfront Boulevard is my favorite part it's a pedestrian promenade that was established in 1909 which runs parallel to Baku seafront there's an amusement park Ferris wheel the yacht club musical fountains and lots of restaurants and even a minute Venice with gondolas how cool is that it's a great place to go jogging or cycling or walking your dog Baku has hosted a lot of international events like the Eurovision in 2012 the 2015 European Games and Formula One race on the Baku City Circuit with the track going around the old city the city has cool taxi cabs these black and purple and yellow cabs were introduced in 2011 and they look like London caps you only find these cabs in two cities in the world that is London and Baku but they are pretty expensive so if you are in a budget you can use Bolt app to get a ride it's really really affordable when it comes to public transportation Baku has buses and a subway system that was opened in 1967 and it has three lines and 25 stations at present a single ride for subway and buses is just 18 cents there's also the Bakufu nuclear that can take you to the flame towers there are many new residential areas being built like Baku white city which kind of reminds me of Paris what do you think it's going to be a community for about 50,000 people how much is one bedroom apartment here it's around 84,000 Baku has a modern international airport that was designed by a Turkish firm I really enjoyed the famous cocoons that is wooden pods on the top layer they house cafes bars as well as children's play areas Baku men love conspicuous consumption and if you want to show everyone that you've made it you gotta have a mercedes g-wagon typical salaries in baku range from 300 to 500 a month a taxi driver told me that he makes around 30 bucks a day but you can tell by the average salary and the cars that you see on the streets that there is an obvious income disparity in the vicinity of the city there are many places to visit like mod volcano salt lakes and natural gas fires like yinner dug which means a burning mountain true to its name the mountain has been blazing for at least 65 years i'm at a place called yana dug and it's a natural gas fire that's been here for who knows how long but it was only discovered in 1950 by a shepherd who accidentally lit it attached of baku or the fire temple of baku as a castle like religious temple that was used as a Hindu psych and Zoroastrian place of worship who mysterious the Bustin it's a historical and cultural reserve located 60 kilometers southwest of Baku you'll find more than 6,000 rock carvings depicting people animals ritual dances and camel caravans dating back to 5,000 to 20,000 BC it covers a huge area of 537 hectares but only a small portion is open to the public they call Baku the windy city you wonder why well let me show you I nearly had my car blown off the road. Once scared the car just got turned over. Now let's see the rest of the country how we gonna travel should you rent a car in Azerbaijan I would say absolutely. Yes if you want to go places you got to have a car so rented this Hyundai for 30 bucks a day hotels normally average. Around 30 to 50 dollars a night roads are good quality but a heads up don't stay in the left lane on the freeway or you'll be fine at the nearest police station it happened to me four times until I figured out what I was doing. Wrong police will often offer to pay in cash half the amount but that's a little secret. Taking a road trip is safe and fun along the roads you will see vendors selling seasonal fruits there are plenty of rest areas and restaurants once you leave baku you'll start seeing a lot more lattice that is all soviet cars because outside of baku wages are a lot lower okay now we're going to visit the second sungait largest city of azerbaijan and that is sungate hey guys and welcome to sungait which is the second largest city in azerbaijan the population is 345,000 people it's a pretty industrial city not too many sites but the seaside promenade is very nice and they have a sungay state university it's located 31 kilometers kilometers away from Baku founded in 1949 Sumgait grew rapidly as a major chemical and metallurgical center its plants produce aluminum steel pipes synthetic rubber petrochemicals and much more all of this unfortunately jeopardized the environmental situation and now it's one of the most polluted areas in the country the city used to have a tram and trolleybus system in the Soviet days but now it's just buses many buses and taxis Around the city there are more than 20 beaches and even a water park and because you can't swim in Baku people would drive here to spend some time on the beach the waterfront boulevard and the semi park are popular places to hang out. 
Relax and watch the sunset pistaf is a famous sculpture in the Simi Park and is the symbol of Sungait. Let's talk to some locals. Okay, what's your name? My name is Rashan. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Ganja. Now let's travel to the northwest of the country to the city of Ganja. Gunja is the third largest city with a population of 335,000 people. Contrary to some gate, Genji has a lot of history and dates back 1,500 years. In the past, different rulers controlled the region including Arabs, Persians, Turks, and Russians Fortress of Ganja or rather the remains of the 16th century fortress welcomes you as you enter the city. The economy of Ganja is based on agriculture, tourism, and some industries for example or minerals extraction from nearby mines supply Ganja's metallurgical plants that produce copper and alumina. Ganja is home to four major universities including Ganja State University. Let's talk to some locals. If I finish university I graduate I want to master in. Foreign country maybe Germany or Germany yeah okay awesome and what do you want to study at the at the university? Moon. What do you like about Ganja? I I first I like the Genesis people. People of Gens okay yes and Gender's food for example.